Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Pawnless Challenge Run, the live stream series where we are trying to complete a hat in time while collecting as few pawns as possible. And if you want to watch these challenge runs on your own time, be sure to subscribe to the YouTube channel, boot that bell button to stay notified. Now when we last left off, we managed to complete a couple of levels. Hey Gregor, thank you so much for dropping by, how's it going? As I was saying, when we last left off, we managed to complete a few levels in uh, Alpine Skyline, mainly the... The Windmill, which is always one of my favorite levels in the entire game, as well as the Lava Cake and the Twilight Bell. Um, unfortunately, none of them could be completed pawnless. But that doesn't uh, rule out the possibility of a level itself being truly pawnless, because we still have yet to do the Birdhouse as well as the Finale. So, that's where we're going to get started with tonight. Oh, cool, Drekor! You worked a lot on your thesis, that's awesome! Hey, Topper Nicholson! Thank you so much for dropping by. How's it going? So, uh, if it's alright to ask, uh, Rekor, what kind of work did you do for your thesis today? I... I remember in my last year of college, it, it, as stressful as it was to do the final papers, it was also some pretty interesting you know, topics. Aw, Oh, I, oh, so that didn't work, uh, Grekor. That's actually, um, well, uh, I, I guess it must have been a real, a really hard for you to do that, but I appreciate the effort, Grekor. It, uh, for those who don't know, Grekor has, um, decided to see if it is possible to go to certain worlds early by breach being past the specific gates in the spaceship area. Now, at first, we didn't think it was possible because we could not physically see the telescopes that let you actually the select the level. Shiny things. But, Rekor wants to investigate that further, and as it turns out, uh, there wasn't anything there, so yeah. That's just kind of how it works sometimes, but hey, thanks for looking into it, Rekor. And hey, Snowflake! Thank you so much for dropping by! How's it going? I hope you're all having an awesome week. It's been, um... Right now, we're trying to make our way back to the birdhouse. Uh, I'm sorry to hear that your, com your computer crashed at Copper Nicholson. Well, uh, one thing, thing I do know about Genshin Impact, uh, Copper Nicholson, is that if, um, there, I think there's some way to check the history of what you rolled for, so that's always good to double check if that's what you're interested in. This could be that. It all depends on whether if we can avoid those pawns. Oh, nice, Snowflake! You started your new game plus on playing Crosscode. Uh, if you don't mind me asking, what, uh, stipulations did you- And now we're restarting the level. <laughs> but if you don't mind me asking, you know, what, uh, settings did you choose for New Game Plus? Does, I mean, as you all saw from the No It's Speed run, the first series I did on this channel, this, uh, Crosscode is such an- Is an amazing game, but it also has some excellent, uh, New Game Plus features. So- one of the reasons I love Crossroads New Day Plus is just there's you can customize it in so many different ways between either imposing different challenges to make the game harder or even easier if you want. Oh, cool, Snowflake. You're doing a no credit run. So all consumables and equipment you'll have to get from Quest or, Ch or Chester just from the opponents. That's, that could be very interesting, Snowflake. It's, um... And, and the reason I say that is that in in Crosscode, you, you don't realize how much stuff you buy until you don't have access to the shops. As an example of that, I would say, think of all the higher tier consumable items in Crosscode, like the better tees, and a lot of the best equipment in the game can only be gotten in shops, so <laughs> that will be interesting. I wish you the best of luck with that challenge run, though, uh, Snowflake. And yep. Yeah. And yep. Yeah. Everyone in chat wish Copper Nicholson well. I know he's not. I know he's not been having the best week, but we all have weeks like that. I'm, I'm sure things will get better. 
Oh, that's right, Copper Nicholson. You you had a call back for that interview. How did it go? Or are you still waiting to hear back? Right here. Let's try that again. <laughs> Ah, I, I can understand that snowflake. Although to be fair, one of the things you realize during a challenge run is just how how much you don't know about a game that you really enjoy, and that is something I definitely had to come to terms with when I was doing the No It's Speed Run, for example. Like, hey, this way doesn't lead to anything. I didn't realize how bad I was at some of the bosses until I faced them with without being able to use combat arts and such on them for the longest time. It's it really makes you see the game in a different perspective, but the. Hey. But just because it's hard doesn't mean it's something you should give up on, because the fact that you are doing a challenge run will... The further you progress in that challenge run, the better you will get at that game, just inherently, because you'll have to get more creative with what you're doing. So, and that's the joy of challenge running, for sure, in my view. But it looks like we have... And speaking of the joy of challenge running, it looks like we have a... <laughs> oh, that's not a... Uh, a message announcement that's just, uh, Copper Nicholson, uh, making a message. Fair enough. Yeah, but I, I agree with what Dracor is saying. It does sound like you'll have to be very resource, um, management. Although, I will say, I think you can grind for sandwiches from, like, um, the hedgehogs in Autumn's Rise. So, if you're, if you kind of get used to using, like, the tiny, um, like the, the smaller sandwiches that might be able to work. Four. Oh, cool! So, you, so you're basically going to try to beat all the PVP battles, and stuff like. I, I, I think that's a lot of fun, personally, trying to go for those. And since you can actually level up, maybe the combat arts might be a great equalizer if you're having trouble finding good equipment. Oh, actually, that didn't quite go as I thought it would, but it's okay. Uh, I believe you, you mentioned that before, um, on record. The Zuka does not... You, you, I don't think you ever beat Shizuka, but it, it's such a fun fight, and I highly recommend trying to defeat Shizuka at least once in crosscode. For sure. Hey, uh... What I would say, Copper Nicholson, is don't think too much about, uh, what you did in the, the interview, because honestly, it's out of your hands right now. You, you probably did your best, and that's all that matters. And whatever's going to happen, will happen. And um, and this goes when, for interviewing for anything. It doesn't just have to be job. Like, you can do your best and do everything right and still might not get in. And that's a... That's a perfect... And, and that can just happen just by the nature of how these things go. It's still a... Uh, there are some things that are just simply out of your control. I know that... Um, but uh, obviously you'll find out in due time. I, I do wish you the best of luck with it. I hope you get... Um, I hope you get the job. Oh no. Snowflake lost her, her Leia emote. No. It was such a cute emote, too. And yeah, please, uh. Please be safe, uh, Copper Nicholson. Ah, that's how we did it last time. So we got up here, and then. Aha! Oh dear. Oh, I agree, Rick. That the Shizuka theme is definitely my favorite song theme in the entire game of Crosscode. Crosscode has a lot of good tracks. Ah. Uh, oh, that's a that's a nice emote, Snowflake. Is that like a is that a Minecraft bee? Yeah. 
because I think that these are a rectangular shape in Minecraft. Aha! It is a Minecraft bee, I was right. I think the bees were an interesting addition to Minecraft. Though probably not for the reason you'd expect. You can make honey you can you can make honey from uh, the beehives of course, but what I always enjoyed using the beehives for was trying to get the trying to make the honey blocks because those should be used as a substitute for slime blocks with like redstone contraptions. I don't know if I've mentioned that I've, that I've, that I've played Minecraft before, but it's... I definitely enjoyed playing it a lot when I was in, I'd say, middle school and early high school. I still enjoy going back to it from time to time, especially with um, modded Minecraft. But... But lately, I've definitely found uh, a lot more enjoyment from action RPGs like Dark Souls, Crosscode, and such, as well as platforming, which is a hand time. And I'm also playing, enjoying a playthrough of, um, I'm enjoying Hollow Knight as well right now. Ah, looks like we have a message to read. So before we, we start this level, I must read the message. What do we have here? From Gregor, read a message as the Mafia. Mafia never plays video games, unless they involve punching old ladies or sassy girls with mustaches. Does this crosscode game you speak of uh, have any of that? Well, it, it has a lot of punching and a, and a lot of older characters, but in terms of girls with mustaches, I'd um, have to get back to you on that. Hi, Monster Player 220, thank you so much for dropping by, how's it going? Ah, yep, um... <laughs> This is a Palmless Challenge run, or I guess technically a minimum Palmless Challenge run, so allow me to demonstrate how we keep track of it. We have this little chart that we use here to keep track of the minimum amount of pawns it takes to complete a level, and this isn't just the pawns within the level itself, it's also things like, um... If a level costs a certain amount of pawns to play, it includes that. It also includes pawns in order to reach level, so... With, in the case of the Twilight Bell, for example, the level itself didn't require any pawns, but the zip lines up to the level, we had to collect pawns. Now, the reason the birdhouse is nine pawns is because at the start of Alpine Skyline, there's that little opening section where you, you don't realize it until you're trying to avoid pawns that <laughs> that you have to you hit uh, these three little spinning switches that have pawns around. And thank you so much for the follow, Monster Player 220. I really do appreciate it. I'm glad to hear you're doing well. Yeah, this is how we keep track of the amount of pawns we're doing. All right, so we're starting this level with 152 pawns, and that's the amount of pawns it took to get here. And without further ado, let's try to beat this level. <laughs> I think you uh, had a question, Snowflake. Oh, you're playing Hollow Knight too. That's awesome. Where, where am I at in the game? Uh, I'm not that far in the game. I just, um, I just finished getting through the grassy area for the first time. And I, I, I know I should know the names of it, but I don't off the top of my head. Through the grassy area, and I defeated the duel with, um, to try and minimize spoilers, someone that has a red tape and a needle with a string attached to it as a weapon. Um, if you don't recognize that snowflake, then that means you probably aren't there yet. But if you do recognize it, then you probably know where I'm at in the game. Oh, you just did that a few days ago. Nice. I find it really surprising that we happen to be, um... <laughs> I guess starting to play the game in earnest at around the same time. That's so cool, though. Ah, <laughs> uh, I'm I, I'm glad you appreciate the challenge uh, that I'm trying to do here, uh, Monster Player it's, or uh, 220. It's it's definitely been really interesting. Levels that normally wouldn't give me a problem have suddenly become completely different because of trying to avoid pawns. And uh, just to clarify. When I say pawns, I don't mean heart pawns. So heart pawns are okay, but it's the green pawns that we have to be worried about. Ah, that's what it was called, green path. I see. Yep. I, I think you're right, uh, monster, t uh, monster person, t monster player 220. R I think Hornet is their name. But yeah. Oh, you played Hollow Knight too? Awesome, Grector. Yeah, it. It is such a well-designed Souls-like Metroidvania, from what I've seen, and it's just <laughs> so much good game design. I mean, if I was if I was challenge running Hollow Knight somehow, I, I could definitely gush about it and and tell about how 
Oh, it's kind of reminiscent of some flash games I used to play when I was younger. But uh, right now we're playing Hat in Time, which is also an amazing game. It definitely has so much charm. Uh, I think Silt Sound is coming out this year, uh, Grekor, and I know I have at least one friend who's absolutely hyped for it. And if it's, a, if it's even a, remotely as good as the original was, then I think we'll be in for a real treat. Out here. Ah, interesting, uh... Monster Player T20, so you haven't actually played it, but you've watched Hollow Knight. Fair enough. I mean... Yeah, sometimes you need to watch a game to really see if it might be something you're interested in. But, for me, I actually went to Hollow Knight after watching... I think practically nothing besides maybe a few gameplay trailers or references to it. And now we have to restart the level. Gosh darn it! That's a death for the death counter. It, it happens. This level is filled with pawns in unfortunate places. Yeah, um... Yeah, I have to say, Hollow Knight is hard, but I find it very, very satisfying. And for the sake of consistency, I am going to start from the beginning of the, of the level. Just to... Because this level isn't particularly long. It's just a process of navigating through it. Uh, good question, Monster Player 220. So, when we collect pawns by accident, there's a couple of different things we do. If the level is short enough, I actually restart the level from scratch, unless it's unless we determine that the pawn is mandatory. And a mandatory pawn is a pawn where, after we've exhausted all possible options we can think of, and still can't avoid it, we just have to accept it as a pawn and add it to the counter at the end of the level. But if it's, well, it's a situation like that where clearly you should avoid the pawns, then obviously we either restart the level or try to, if it's a super long level, we restart from a checkpoint. And then I update the counter and we start again. But yeah, we're starting this level with 154 pawns, and that's the amount of pawns it took to get here. Without further ado, let's see if we can complete this level. Oh, cool! Uh, yeah, I could definitely understand Snowfly getting stuck in Hollow Knight because it is a Metroidvania and you have to do a lot of backtracking, which normally I like, and I, I do like it in Hollow Knight, but I can understand how it could be confusing at times, and what- Oh, I mean, I guess technically since we were up here already, but just for the sake of argument, let's, um, do it correctly. That, and there we go. I, I do appreciate that the that the game designers decided to add maps you could get in Hollow Knight just because without that I would get so 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 lost in the game. And even with it, it'd still be confusing where to go at times. Oh dear. But uh, by that same token, I do appreciate that the world is, la is large enough in Hollow Knight that it's actually difficult to remember. To me, that's actually good because it means the world is vast. Yeah, I can understand that, Drakkor. Looking at walkthroughs, I, I understand it. Sometimes you're at a point in a game where you just you want to progress, but you just have no idea what to do. And that's what walkthroughs are for. Yep. But I, I agree with you, Gretor, that uh, I, I think of walkthroughs more as a last resort than what I go to first. Uh, uh, yeah, those are the... I guess they kind of do like with like Elvis Presley. Those pros can just knock you around. Which, while it doesn't do damage, they might knock you off a cliff or something and that can set you back. Is that all? The ladder! Away! Alright, so if you... For those of you who were here at the end of last stream, there was a section that we were having trouble with, and it's this one right here. We have to get that horn in order to be able to progress to the ending. But unfortunately, it seems... 
to be very, very precariously situated. Let's try to line this up. Okay, we can stand here. That's that's good. This is progress. I think we'll have to. Okay, that works. Let's just let that egg run out its time. Yep, fair enough, Snuffle. Walk around. Jump over that. Okay, this is good. We got through that section. Well, we did get through that section. <laughs> now we have to do it again, but at least we know what to do. We almost touched upon there. I got so scared. Ah, uh, fair enough. Yeah, Crosscode is such a large game. There are places where you can get stuck or maybe a little confused. Though, to the developer's credit, I think they did a good job explaining what to do, at least with the main storyline. There were some side quests, though, that could be really tricky to navigate. Especially in, uh, I think it was Gaia's Garden. Between the pumpkin quest and the the, the plant quest, if you get very confused. Try this again. Very edge. Hit that. Hit the pawns. Fuck around. Okay, thank goodness there aren't pawns right there. And... Alright, progress, ladies and gentlemen. Now all we have is that little zip line to go on, and just the, the last part of this level. I just realized something. I think the implication here is that that giant bird is like the the mother of all the small birds we see in the rest of the game. And if that is the case, that would be a, a nice little lore bit. Mm. Why? We were right there, no! It happens. I'm sorry, chat. I know, I was right there. <laughs> yes, somebody says, I look away for one second. Yeah, I know, I know. It, it, it was a really dumb pawn collection too, but to be fair, it's a small platform. I'll have to, I'll have to experiment a bit. Unfortunately, this means we have to give Hackett another reset. Alright. From the top. I swear this bird house is going to be the death of me. I thought bird houses were supposed to be fun. This is... This is honestly... Be very unfun. Ah, first, must read a message as Apollo. A true hero never forgets to update the pawn counter! Wait, and Thomas didn't update the pawn counter? It didn't. Shame on you, and Thomas. I'm sorry, Emily. I'm sorry, it's fixed. Thank you. So, we're starting this level with 150 cents pawns. That's the amount of pawns to get here, without further ado. Let's try to complete this level. <laughs> we, we've already failed so many times at this level. It's, it's not as easy as it looks. Yeah. Oh dear. No, 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 no. Was the string still up while I was... Was the string still up at the start of the level? Uh, 
Oh no. All right, one moment. I know, I know, but yeah, you do realize I have to, if this is a successful run, I have to make a YouTube highlight of it, so it is a, it is a process. I'm sorry. <laughs> one last time. Grind level 150 set spawns. There's the amount of pawns it took to get here. And let's try to complete this level on this, I guess. All right. I think we're good. It, it, it's fine, chat. It, that, that's my fault. Sometimes when I'm trying to switch uh, scenes on OBS, it, it, it either lags and doesn't take the button press into account, because I, I do have buttons I use to switch between different scenes or really. Sort of like a keyboard shortcut. That's all good. Where, I, I was speaking about something, I just can't remember what. <laughs> I think it was about as how we've been stuck at at this level for over an hour in game time if we include last stream's attempt. Well, oh, um, I guess that I guess that's true, uh, Emily. Well, I should know. I've been trying to avoid all these verbs as well as, as these pawns all this time. It gets very distracting, you know. I'm sorry, Emily. I promise this time for sure we'll we'll try it and at least make some progress. Okay then. Now I guess just to be thorough, I should show that how to get past how to get to that horn. So what you want to do is just touch the very edge of that, jump around, and then it's not too bad. Up right? around or not. All right, we'll make progress. Avoid the Elvis Presley birds. That's, that's probably true, Snowflake. This whole thing is just Emily training to prepare for Cross Worlds and especially to uh, win the dungeon races against Leia. I don't know why I'm trying to do these levels as fast as possible, but for some reason, I think it, it will lead to future shipping in another world. I don't know why, I just have a feeling. Look at that. I was, I was a fourth wall breaker even then. This is where, of course, you would get up here to blow the horn, and now we jump right back down to try and continue. Just like that. <laughs> exactly, Snowflake. Okay, you know what? That platform is actually really small, so we'll have to be a little bit creative getting up there, I think. Does this have collision? Kinda. All right. I don't want to jump up there because if I do, it's just going to. <laughs> if only it was that simple, Dracor, because the. I guess as you put it, the Atomic Cinematic Universe is already extremely complex. Oh, there we go. That was actually some fancy footwork, but it worked out. Nope, wait, wait, no, 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 no. Okay, well, I'll have to do that down. That's okay. We at least have a way up there. But basically, all you need to know, um, if you're watching this and wondering who the heck is Emily, Emily is a character from the game Crosscode. She is my favorite character in that game, even more so than the protagonist, Leia, though Leia's an awesome character in her own right. And we have a running gag on the stream that uh, this, of course, is that uh, Emily's hat hit because she does make a face similar to what hat hit does with her, her smut dance. Thanks for the thanks for the well wishes, uh, Snowflake. All right. 
I want to do is just wall run up there and then have to kind of double jump back on that tree. Ooh, that was close. Okay, that works. And there we go. The level is pointless, but you still need um, nine pawns to get here from Alpine Style Line. Oh, that would be funny, Rekor. But yeah, let's go. That means we get to keep the, the pawn counter at nine pawns for Birdhouse just because of Alpine Style Line. <laughs> And I agree, Gregor. I do love the little animation where she's trying to s tell the timepiece to be quiet. <laughs> it's like, no, no, don't wake up. <laughs> but now, chat. Oh boy. <laughs> the finale to Alpine Skyline has begun. So we're starting this level with 156 spawns. And this is the amount of pawns it's to get here. And without further ado, let's try to beat Alpine and Skyline's finale at, while collecting as few pawns as possible. It is a really fun song, I had read record. Though, admittedly, I think the, the finale to Alpine Skyline is the weakest of all. The, actually, I take that back. I think. I think the finale to Chapter to seal the deal is, is the weakest, but only slightly compared to this. At least here there's a bit more of a threat from the plants than things you see in the finale of uh, the Arctic Cruise. But even so, I don't... These, these are both just kind of, I think, above average finales, where it's not... It doesn't really grab me like some of the other finales that are either boss battles or really intense. Alright, I see pawns already, so we'll have to be very careful. Yeah, that, that's a good point, Rector. The Arctic Cruise finale just kind of comes out of nowhere because of Hat Kid. And it also happens way too quickly. But um, at the, I, I do agree that at least here there was a tiny bit of buildup, so that was... No, did it? I'd like to point out, though, that these, um, these villagers don't even seem to care that... <laughs> All this is happening. There's like, yeah, whatever. There's a horn at the top. Who cares? Ah, <laughs> uh, fair enough, Snowplay. I know you haven't played ahead of time. Just, just know that uh, when we when we eventually do the Arctic uh, Cruise levels later, you'll see what I mean. In fact, um. Let me think about it. If we... Get up. There we go. We have to get up there, which is... Oh, it's not here. I I'm doing the wrong thing. I have to actually go to the left there. It, it is kind of confusing to navigate these sometimes. I wonder, if I jump here, will I... Uh, no, I won't. Okay. Why the pawns? Alright, we avoid the Yeah, I went the wrong way. That's my bad. Yeah. Yep. That's true, Rector. Uh, Hat in Time is on the Switch. And I think the... If it hasn't already, I think the DLC will be coming soon to the Switch. Oh no, I just realized something. No! Oh. No. We have to use this route. No. Well, I actually do have to reset because the optimal strat for that route is only to collect one pawn, so... Yeah, hand time is... It's just so... It is... It is cute as heck, and it is amazing. Unfortunately, chat, that was an unfortunate series of collections. So if you all remember from the windmill uh, peak um, attempts, that one zip line has that one pawn you can't hold.
Oh, interesting. I had no idea that the the finale to Alpine Skyline actually lost out the rest of the time pieces. That's interesting. Oh, interesting sounds like so you have an Xbox. Nice. Yeah, I don't think I had times on that spots, which is a shame, but I understand why. It's a small enemy team, so. There's only so much to do. Okay. We're gonna lean right. We're lean right, then as soon as we collect that pawn, lean left. Okay, we're leaning left. I think this is the. No, we have to lean right there, bro. On the right side, at least we. At least we're getting a lay of the land. Yep. Fair enough, Snowflake. Fair enough. Okay. So we're starting uh, the finale to Alpine Skyline with that many pawns, and this is the amount of pawns it's to get here. And without further, further ado, let's try to complete this level while collecting as few pawns as possible. That's fair, Snowflake. And uh, if you're saving up for a PC, I would highly recommend going for a desktop with. Um, like, and uh, try to uh, get a, a couple of parts for it to really beef it up because you can save some money that way and it'll also give you a machine that'll last you a while, which is always a good thing. And on top of that, as uh, games get more and more complex, all you have to do is buy, if you start with like a really solid base for a computer, the... Um, all you'd have to do is upgrade some components rather than buying a completely new system, so it does help in that regard. Now, unfortunately, that one pawn you saw in that system is mandatory. So we kind of have to accept that. But... Not fair enough, correct work. Now we have to be very careful because... We have to Need to make our way to the to the plants. Oh no. I, I heard that there were plants here, but I didn't think they'd be a problem. It's would appear that I've done something wrong here. If I can get up here. Do I jump to that flap now? I can't. I feel like I'm missing something here. Oh, I see it. There, you have to. There's a little hooks to down. But I do like the nice touch that the, the plants are actually preventing us from going to some of the other levels, like, for example. It's tricky. Uh, yes, Dracor. So the reason that pawn is mandatory is just because the way that string of pawns in that area is set up. It's set up in such a way where it kind of does a curve from left to right, which means there's a pawn in the left, a pawn in the center, and a pawn in the right. All in a very condensed area. And what that effectively means is you have to swing. You can only swing so many different ways, and there's no way to, that I know one to skip past the zip lines. So it becomes a mandatory pawn. Please don't. Okay. At least those don't drop pawns. That's really good. That's very, very, very true, Snowflake. They can't sell both away from their fists. Hmm. I'm going to. I don't know why, but hitting plants to try and collect them seems to make sense. Is this foreshadowing something in the future? Ah, oh, there's no way. Alright. 
Now for the tricky part, we have to do this in reverse. Okay, so the way here, we had to lean right, left, then right again, so... Okay, so we're going to lean right. I hope I... Okay. Right, left, left, and right, right, right. Okay, thank goodness, there we go. That, that was spooky. Right! The zip lines are evil, chat. The zip lines are evil. I think we already knew this, but the zip lines are evil. <laughs> hey, Dr. Sputnik, thank you so much for dropping by. How's it going? So we're starting uh, the finale to. Let me start it. We're starting the finale to Alpine Styling with that many pawns. This is the amount of pawns we have to get here. And without further ado, let's try to beat this level while collecting as few pawns as possible. And you're absolutely right, Snowflake. <laughs> I let my guard down for one second, and a hat in time surprises me with a pawn. This world is vicious. I know, Emily. I know. So we lean left. Trying to lean right. Go left. And right. Now we just hold right for the... And it's right, yeah. Just hold right for the rest of the way there. Uh, that, that's correct, Snowflake. So the sub badge is Dorothy with a little one of her. And uh, I'm glad you like the design. Thank you for the compliment. Ah, uh, yes. Indeed, Dr. Splendid. How dare... How dare they give us money? Oh, speaking of Dorothy... Uh, what about Dorothy, uh, Drekler? Uh, good question. The, the way I'm developing the game, it's just going to be an E... I think it's just going to be, like, an application for a .exe file. So, I think, because of that, it, it'll depend how resource intensive it gets, but Windows 7 would probably work. I don't know for sure, though, so don't quote me on that. It's, it's, I'm just saying that because the software I'm using to develop the game, I used on a Windows 7 computer before. And if I could make ESE files with that and run my previous ESE files on Windows 7, I don't see why it wouldn't still be able to do that, but... I wouldn't actually know unless uh, someone with a Windows 7 computer were to test it. That being said, um, when I make a demo for my game, and bear in mind, I do not have any set date for that right now because there's still quite a bit I need to do, though I am definitely making progress on that end. Um, I'm more than open to having others uh, try the demo out, and honestly, trying it out on older versions of Windows would be a good kind of stress test for, for the game for sure. At those plants. Got it. No, Copper Nicholson, I will not go that route. Uh, that is correct, Snowflake. So the number per does change depending on how long you've been subbed for. I think it's, I think it's in a row, but I'm not entirely sure about that. But the idea is that if you've been like a, a two-month sub badge, whatever, to uh, a three-month, a, a three, a six-month, a six, nine month, a nine, one year would be look a little bit different. But, but yeah. Or I I think that 
If, if it's like a big number one, that's actually a founder badge, and what that means is that you are among the first uh, subs to the Twitch channel. So, that's just a, a thing that Twitch does. It's always there. So, no matter how many subs there are in the future, or whether you continue being subbed or not, you'll always have that little uh, founder badge to show that you show, you are among the first to actually sub. That's what you need, right? Left. Oh, okay, right, now right, 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 right. And now we just, I want to say, left. Okay, we, we just barely dodged that, let's go. I am not, no, Copper Nicholson, I am not doing that. I mean, Which way to the next one? Okay, we need to go that way. Oh, really? I, I did not know that snow play. I didn't know it, it took the place of the normal sub badge. I thought it was just kind of went to the side of it. Well, that's a shame. Because, I mean, while the founder badge is cool and all, it's nice to see the actual sub badge. Shot that no. I, I agree. Being able to customize a sub badge would be a nice touch, though. I don't know if Twitch has the ability to do. No. No, Copper Nicholson. Well, for one thing, and the way I'm developing the game wouldn't make a whole lot of sense on mobile controls. Like, imagine trying to play CrossCode on mobile. That's why I thought. <laughs> it just wouldn't make a whole lot of sense because the, the game is so fast paced and well, okay. well cross code is so fast paced it would just be really hard to play. And while uh, the game I'm developing part well isn't quite, it isn't as fast paced as cross code, it's still an action RPG and definitely not something that would make sense for a mobile platform. Besides, uh, I'm developing it for PC, and at the moment, you know, that's, that's the, and for now, at least, that's the only um, console I'd be developing for. Just because it's why I know. And it, it works for, for what I'm doing for. I don't think it will work very well just because of the nature of the name. They'd have to rebalance it to make it even remotely playable. Exactly. The, the screen would be covered in so many different buttons, it just wouldn't be playable. Or, if it was playable, it wouldn't be fun. Not to say it. there are definitely good mobile games out there, but the combat is, as you rightly point out, Red War, it, it's the combat doesn't even come close to comparing to what you can get on PC or.
Okay, there we go. Question Snowflake. Uh, I'm I'm not currently thinking about that for now, just because of that. Why? <laughs> Zip lines. Why? Uh, to answer your question, Snowflake, I'm I'm not currently thinking about that because I've. I still need to develop the game first, so that that would definitely affect the feasibility of that. <laughs> now, when the game's staying, uh, when I'm much further in development in the game, that would be a different qu kind of question to think about. But for for now, I I wouldn't even know firsthand how to go through the whole porting process using uh, Fusion 2.5. Uh, don't don't get me wrong, Snowflake. I really do appreciate the the questions. <laughs> It's it just more so that, but that is a fair point. Like when I'm on the zip lines, I really do have to focus to just avoid those pawns. Because literally, the zip lines are what keep tripping us up here. All right, we're starting this level with uh, this many pawns. This is the amount of pawns I took to get here. And without further ado. Let's try to complete this level while collecting as few pawns as possible. Ah, as a. That, that's a fair point. Yeah. That's fair enough, Snowflake. I mean, to be fair, the demo for the game I'm developing is. I, I don't even know when it would be. When the demo would be ready, so there's still plenty of time. So, but when you eventually get a when you eventually get a stock computer, then that would be something to do. something you can try out. But for now, still have a lot of development to do. On the plus side, though, I have been doing I I made some decent progress uh, this week, so I continue to I actually as I was writing the the branching paths for the. Uh, what is it called? As I was writing some of the branching paths for the game's first interactive cutscene, I actually found um, one of the dialogue choices I found I was writing ended up being something that led me to want to write, uh, basically write an entirely new character to better a uh, to better accommodate the dialogue choice, and it led to a real a character that I'm excited about because it it fills in some gaps and the backstory of the main character, so I, I, it makes me really excited, and also helps further expand the lore. Yep. Yeah, for, for sure, Grekor. I'm, I'm, I'm trying my best to keep working on it. Uh, uh, yeah. Though, so, when I say new character, I mean, like, new NPC. Obviously, in my game, Dorothy Artwell is the main character, so she's, um, who you play as. But, uh, there are, of course, going to be plenty of other characters in the game that are part of the story, or can be part of the story, and it's a, going to be a very story-rich game, so I have to, like, so a lot of the characters will, of course, add to the lore, as well as... Any of them might actually be bosses, so there's that aspect to it as well. Uh, yeah, no, it's fine, Snowplay. Um, I'm forgetting the character's last name because it was something a little more obscure. But the first name, I think, is Aaron, I want to say. And um, basically, this character is a instructor of, uh, uh, there is a teacher of sorts. Right? Left. And, um, uh, I'll say that, uh, this, um, this mentor is one of a number of people who, uh, had a big impact on Dorothy's life.
though. Yep, and I guess I'll leave it at that, I, because I, I I wish I could talk more about, like, the other characters and stuff, but I, I very quickly get into the point of spoiler territory, because I, I want to make sure that when the dome comes out, there's some surprises for you all, or at least you, you all can experience what the, um, some of the, some of the, uh, some of my different ideas and such. Uh, a sorry, Aaron as in, like, uh, A-A-R-O-N, it's, it's a guy's name. Snowflake. Yeah, um, I actually have a lot more characters written than just those three, but well, not a lot more characters. I have quite a few more characters, uh, at least the, the foundations of their story, uh, their lore in, written down already. But those are the those are the three names I'm willing to share at least for now, just because they aren't j just their names unto themselves aren't spoilers and and just basic descriptions. Either. It's only when I get into fine details that that's where I have to kind of take a step back and be like, okay, just don't go too far into, into depth there. <laughs> but, um... but yeah. There we go. Now we're up here. Do the bush, uh, bush step. Oh, that's right, Snowflake. How's that going, by the way? Have you made any more progress with uh, your writing for your game? Because I know that you were... Um, you had some questions about uh, going in a particular direction with your narrative. Oh, cool. Yeah, Sno yeah, Snowflake. If you're in the yeah, if you're in the U.S., it's there, there's plenty of good outlets to get a, a nice computer from, whether it's an actual store or what I actually like to do. Where I got most of my stuff for my computer was on a place called Newegg.com, and it's a uh, it's a really good PC uh, gaming website for like PC hardware and stuff. That's where I got my graphics cards, my. Uh, Hard drives, computer, and all that. Oh, oh, awesome, Snowflake. Sure, tell us about your game. Be interested to hear about it. Here on, um, here on these Twitch streams, we're all we're all very supportive of other projects, especially if it's games. Ah, you know what, Snowflake? That's actually a good step to take. I'm not sure if I've told you all this, but when I'm developing the narrative for my game, I actually, I don't write the story out first. I actually spend a lot of time just writing about locations and characters and just who they are, uh, what their personalities are, what their goals in life are, things like that, their philosophies, etc. Basically, it's world building, if that's the right term. And because of um, that world building, uh, those different characters that can actually help you write a better story because you have more to work with. There we go. Alright, so we're finally making some good progress. Ah, fair enough, Snowflake. No, I, I, I welcome that. Anyone who eventually tests uh, what I'm working on, I would appreciate trying to work, uh, basically trying to find ways to break the game, because that helps me, of course, fix bugs before it gets released.
Ah, I see. Oh, you're moving, Snowflake. Or you moved. Yeah. Uh, if you don't mind, don't mind me asking, where were you? Um, where were you moving to? Because I've had to. I, I know I've had to move fairly recently. Uh, well, not fairly recently. This was uh, last year, actually. So after I graduated from college, I had to move to, of course, uh, near where my where my new job is going to start. Okay, so mean right? I think it's right. In it's right. Okay, so it's right, and then right, right and then here we go again. Why? Why? I don't even understand. Yeah, I got a pawn. I got... And hey, that foul sent you so much dropping by. How's it going? I just, um... Yep. Yeah. Ah, fair enough, Snowflake. <laughs> I just, uh, unfortunately collected some pawns there at the same spot. I need to remember to just lean right when going backwards on that one zip line. I always get them at stuff. But yeah. Uh, hey, that bots. Welcome to the. Welcome to the. We'll say the pawnless challenge run or the minimum pawnless challenge run, where we're trying to beat this game while collecting as few pawns as possible. Unfortunately, I've been attempting the same level for quite a while now, <laughs> and I actually do need to take a quick water break. So, don't go anywhere, guys. I'll be right back. Alrighty, welcome back. Uh, oh, cool. Uh, glad to hear that your situation's improving, Snowflake. That's that's always a good thing. Yeah, uh, you're right, Gretor. I'm stuck on the illness to spread that level, and it's just because I keep making uh, silly mistakes on the, the zip lines. So it's not. I don't think it's two pawns. I think it's just one pawn so far that's mandatory, and that's on the way. Uh, on the zip line where you're heading towards the windmill, but. Yeah, it does get very, very, very Ah, uh, is that the Dr. Spudman? They're not bugs, they're features. So we're starting to level with... So we're trying to level with this many pawns, and this is the amount of pawns it's taking to get here, and without further ado, let's try to beat this level. Hey, History Kid! Thank you so much for dropping by! How you been, buddy? Right now, uh, this is kind of where we're at in the, in the Palmas run so far, and we're, we've been on this level for, most, for a good portion of the stream so far. And it's all because of zip lines. The zip lines are evil. Oh, nice. I'm glad you died to sleep. How's, uh, how's your tension streams going, by the way? Okay, 
So we lean right. This, this is a mandatory pawn right here. Then we shift left and right again. Left, I think. Ah yes, of course, Chad is always chatting. That's that's always a good thing. Chad being Chad. Now we head up here. Ah, uh, that's correct, that box. So we do include as you put as you put it, uh Pawns that have to be paid in advance of starting a level, whether that's pawns for opening a station for artifacts or pawns that are mandatory to enter a level in the first place. And for Alpine Skyline, it is actually not possible, as far as I'm aware, to do any of the levels in Alpine Skyline pawnless because the opening segment of Alpine Skyline requires you to get nine pawns. Oh, nice! You called Ganyu History Kid in uh, Potential Impact. That's awesome. I actually got Ganyu as well through. Uh, I think it was the pity wish I had saved up, and it, it, it worked out, so I was so I was so excited. Ganyu seems like, is, is such an interesting character to play with in Henshin Impact, because she's all about charged bow attacks, which is definitely very... It's much more methodical than, than a typical uh, bow and arrow user in Henshin Impact. I really enjoyed the, the slower, more methodical playstyle. I kind of jump. That's true, history kid. She has a cinnamon roll, which is a good thing. Go this way. But yeah. Um, I think. Yeah. So, since you were bringing up your game earlier, Snowflake, have you thought about, like, what kind of a game is it? Is it, like, a platformer or a puzzle game? Or, like, what are your thoughts there? I think it's. We lean left. We lean left until. Now we lean right. Now we just need. To... Alright, there we go. Oh, come on! Why? <laughs> <laughs> I should have jumped. It was hiding. It blended in perfectly with the grass. <laughs> but but yeah, history kid, you definitely should play this game. It is. It's amazing. It's adorable. I really really like it. Unfortunately, we keep collecting pawns, but. <laughs> Oh, this level. <laughs> I just want... The entire stream is just going to be this level at this point. <laughs> I'm sorry, chat. I'm sorry. All right. So we're starting the level with this many pawns. The amount of pawns is set to get here. <laughs> Without further ado, let's try to do this level. <laughs> it's... Yeah. Ah, all right. Fair enough, that box. I, I, I would appreciate that. Thank you. Uh, hey, Shiny Golden Lotus, thank you so much for dropping by. How's it going? We've kind of been stuck doing this level for a while, so... <laughs> okay. Oh, no. You're calling them Palms, History Kid? That's funny. Oh. 
Oh, nice, you got an NPC. That's awesome, Shiny Golden Lotus. Alright. Well, our mask. Ooh. Ooh, that's, that's a long message, but I do want to read it, so... Bear with me, chat. I do actually want to read this. Oh, it's uh, a duo named Cosme and Cass. They're both self appointed defenders of their city and relief characters who have the best intentions. Super caring and supportive. Okay, cool. Awesome. Both their partners, Will and Coven, to be important to their story, too. Okay. Okay. Interesting. Now you say they're in a city. Does that mean like this is some kind of platformer snow play, or is it a uh, is it some other gameplay genre? Oh, that's actually really interesting. You want all of the characters' names to have K in them. Honestly, I think that's really cool because there are. I find it really interesting when an author of any kind of content, it doesn't have to be games, it could be books even, try to use themes with their writing. Uh, a perfect example of this is actually The Hunger Games, where I think every single major character in that game, it, it, not that game, that book series is named after some type of food to kind of be a play on words with the, with the idea of it's called The Hunger Games and nearly everyone's named after food, so it's, it kind of makes sense. Like, Katniss is a type of, I think, a type of barrier or something, and yeah. Pita is obviously Pita Brit. Ah, it's a rhythm game. Interesting. Now, there are different ways to do a rhythm game. Is it just your traditional dance dance revolution kind of fair, or is there a bit more complexity to it, such as with, like, Lair of the Necrodancer, or... Sorry, not Lair. I think it's Trip of the Necrodancer, or... Uh... Cadence of fire rule, little things like that. Jump down here. So, right, and then left. We hold the left until. Now we just need to lean. Okay, there we go, we're good. Oh, interesting. So, you're trying to make an action adventure based off of Star Tropics using RPG Maker. Interesting, Chip Red Four. Oh, best of luck with that. That's, I don't. I remember um, looking at a, a, a another game that released uh, recently called. Uh, who I've been following for a little bit, uh, called, I think it's called Ralph's Adventure or something like that, and uh, I don't know if it was made in RPG Maker or not, but it definitely, I remember one of the reviews for it saying that the game kind of reminds of Star Tropics, though, though I haven't actually played Star Tropics. What is uh, Star Tropics about? Way, but then we have to lean right on the way back. All right. Okay, so the so stuff like you say, you want Battles to be in the South Hall, and I, except you don't control the the main character. You have to focus on the enemy attach, which go to the music and counter by pressing the button associated with the side on sets if the enemy hits the right. Okay. 
So... So if it... If the battles are in the style of Hollow Knight, does that mean that it's like you can platform around, but instead of controlling in when the character attacks, so for example, if I'm using Hackhead, I left click, I attack. Instead, it's more so you have to you have to kind of hit your buttons at, at the right beat compared to the opponents approaching you. Did I describe that right, or have I missed uh, the, the idea? Interesting, uh, Rekor, thanks for explaining that. That does sound like a Star Tropics does sound like an interesting game. I see, so it has cell based movement. Okay. That could make it. That would definitely affect how you approach different areas for sure. Okay, so, so what you're saying, Snowflake, is you meant the aesthetic looks like it would in Hollow Knight, so kind of like that flash-drawn animation, but uh, the combat is more uh, rhythm. Okay, interesting. Yeah, it would definitely be a unique mechanic to try and, uh, you control a character, but it's not that you control a task, but rather you're controlling their response to different enemies. That kind of makes it more content sensitive. That could lead to some pretty interesting gameplay because it becomes a, 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 then it becomes a game about positioning with your opponents and reacting at the right time. Ah, that bot, you're saying that the, the sewers level appears to be, um, only the five require pawns to finish Mafia Town. I thought you couldn't access the sewers until after you complete down with the Mafia. Or are you saying, like, does the sewers happen to be an area where you need to collect five pawns in order? Well, I will say, Snowflake, it, it, sometimes another useful thing if you're developing a game is to write how your mechanics work or gameplay ideas you have. I have to do that all the time with what, I, with what I'm doing, especially considering that the game I'm developing has sort of weapon level trees. So, in order to make that, you have to first come up with a, a, a system for different stats and then actually trying to figure out what each um, option on the, the tree would do and then try to make different trees for different weapons for them to be really... It's a lot of information. You can't just memorize all that in your head. You have to write it down. Yeah, fair enough. Uh, user story, you say. Now, I think I have to... Okay, it's lean right. Hold right.
Alright, we're dead. If you, if you enjoy a specific type of, of gameplay at Snowplay, then that's usually a good um, a good thing because it means that you'll be more inspired when you're working on a game with that type of gameplay. Whether it's action RPGs in my case, or rhythm games in your case, or I guess um, well, there's plenty of examples like that, but oftentimes uh, game developers make games that they would want to play. Okay, we lean left. Alright, chat, that's progress. Oh, I see that bot. So, you have to get to she came from outer space. And then, once you do that, then you could actually build it. Although, that bot's... Um... Wouldn't that mean that, um... Don't you have to still pay the pawns to actually build the station to make the time rift for sewers? Because if that is the case, then that would greatly increase the pawn count. Yep, so happy to finally be making progress on this level. Nope. Oh, that could have been bad. I know, I know, don't choke, it's at when we have to... We're already so far into it, we're on the last plant. I think we have to go towards the fire area. Yeah, I'm pretty sure they all have to be fixed that boss, but feel free to check. Just the last time I checked, all the relic uh, areas had to be fixed. I just on a new file. Thanks for doing that, by the way. I, I really do appreciate it. You're actually the second person to stream to uh, be checking stuff in a half time for this run. It was actually um, Gregor who, who was the first to check the stream. And thanks, Snowflake. I really do appreciate it. Now let's uh, lean left. Yeah, lean left. I think we're good. We're all right here. Good be. Left, 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 Uh, right. Yeah. There we go. Now we just need to be very, very, very careful. Um, that way? Oh, wait, I see the... Oh no. Right. No! I should have leaned right. Oh. Uh. <laughs> no. <laughs> this level. <laughs> yes, exactly, Snowflake. After this level. <laughs> it's right. After this level, I need to find all the ziplines, and they must burn! They must burn! The zipline sections pins on this planet are awful. There's just pawns everywhere. I don't like it. I I'm sorry, Emily. I mean, really, who designed these zipline sections? Yep. level. <laughs> okay. Starting this level this many pawns. Now pawns if we can get here. Without further ado, let's try to do the level correctly this time. <laughs> oh, we have been on this level for a while. <laughs> okay. From the top. Left. 
and right. Left. Right. And left. Okay. Yeah, we're good. Okay, so that was the mandatory pawn. Now we just get into This was at this moment that I truly understood the meaning of the word. We saved that, that was awesome. Yeah. All right, back here again. Oh, uh, that's such a race, huh? That's no play. Yeah, I mean, if someone does find a way to avoid that one pawn on the zipline here, I, I'd appreciate it. <laughs> but I say token, and it would just Im imply more, as you put it, more suffering. On Hatkin's part, at least. Because if there is any way to avoid that pawn, it probably involves, like, really, really careful timing. Which, uh, the way you Um, it's a good question, Rekwar. I think in this game, the word heck is a substitute for the F word. Hey, cool wall too. Thank you so much for dropping by. How's it going? Welcome to, um, the finale to Alpine Skyline. And it is... We've been doing it for most of the stream because these zip lines are evil in terms of their pawn placement. Okay, so I think we want to lean right first. Thank you. Please. We lean left. We're just going to hold left until we see three pawns. Oh, nice! Eating dinner. Nice hole, too. Don't mind me asking what you're having for dinner. I had some, some pasta that I made over. Some tomato based pasta that I made over the weekend. It was really, really good. <laughs> Nice. I mean, I'm not the biggest fan of eggs, but I, I know I'm. I know other people join them, enjoy them, and that's fine. But rice is great. Honestly, there should be a. Someone should make like a zipline rage montage for me because it's or like a zipline fail montage because that's been happening a lot this stream. Especially on this level in particular. <laughs> Actually, you know what, chat? I think we found our second running dad for this stream. So the first running dad is, of course, all the time pieces are junk. But now the second running dad is zip lines are evil. I don't like zip lines. They're rough and coarse, and they just go everywhere you don't want them to. Especially when you're trying to avoid collecting pawns. Here. No, no, no. Those who are wondering why I'm going to the right here is because there's, I, I can't think of any way to dive directly to those height rope blocks there and. This area just has fewer more. It allows us to. That's right, Seth Play. Who knew something so pretty could be so vicious? Oh, okay, fair enough. You're you're just getting wrecked. Or I I got concerned there for a second. Because that sounded. I I thought that hit maybe a little too close to home for you. Sorry. About that. As long as it was all good fun. 
Because that was actually a pretty... If it was just a joke, that was actually pretty good. <laughs> exactly that. The pawns are the worst invention ever. But they're not even really an invention. They're just green gemstones that, that nobody wants. Oh, I did. That's that's nice, Gregor. It's that's a nice play on that classic phrase. Pawns are the root of all evil. Of all all the stuff of 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 ale of um folly and stuff. I hear the world. Oh, I see. Okay. So, did you know the person who did that fan tub? Uh, that that fan tub, uh, cool wall too. Yeah, th those series are fun though. They're they're very fun. Oh, I get it. Ah uh, ha ha. That that was a. Okay. That wasn't that bad. Okay, now we just lean right. Oh yeah, that's a fair point. Or if you want to talk about some of the headshot references, uh, there was actually a pretty funny one back in uh, the crossover SP run where we were. You all remember Doctor, the Doctor Robot at NPC at level one? <laughs> that conversation was just so hilarious. Yeah, the headshot guy. He says hmm, level one. That I think he says something like, hmm, "I see you are level one." That is a pretty the average level for. Uh, guys, or, or so I've been told, or something like that, and I just, I just completely lost it because it is not as super under. Wait, did I just collect a? Did I just collect a pawn. You have gotta be kidding me! I didn't even hear it. Like, where was? Oh, it was there. There's a pawn right. Why? This is level. <laughs> this is even worse than the Mafia boss. <laughs> hey, does somebody he need a smut dance? Yes, Emily, I do need a smut dance. Okay, here you go. <laughs> yeah, you know what, Snowfly? That's actually a great suggestion. <laughs> Yeah, at this point. <laughs> okay. Yeah, l let's make a predi let's I I'm adding a prediction chat. <laughs> like just at this point with how many times I failed this level, this is <laughs> That's fair. Okay. <laughs> let's uh see how do I do it? All right, chat. Here's how this is going to work. I'm going to say, where's my prediction? No, I've got to edit it. I'm trying to edit this.
remember I didn't change that. Alright, uh, chat, if this starts a new prediction by accident, uh, please ignore it. I'm just trying to... Okay, no, it, it just means that I need to change it. So here's how this is going to work, chat. If I, um... If it's 9 o'clock, and I fail the level after 9 o'clock, then that means that I'll end the stream there, okay? So just so we're all on the same page. The prediction is, can I beat... Um... Uh, the illness, the the Alpine, Alpine Skyline finale a night question mark. And of course, the, the option is yes or no. I will give you all a 15 minute uh, submission period, and the prediction starts right now. All right, it, you you should be able to. Uh, to start the predictions uh, there in the in the chat uh, chat, have fun with that because honestly I have no idea at this point. <laughs> I'm going to try my best to beat this level, but at the same time I recognize it's getting towards nine. This will be interesting. Oh wow, I, I've already seen big numbers in their chat. Fair enough. <laughs> I'll do my best. Yeah, thanks for the suggestion, though, Snowflake. I think that was actually a good idea, just adding some states here. I'm gonna try Snowflake, I really am. <laughs> oh, Confer Nicholson has, has no faith. Ye of little faith, Mr. Nicholson. <laughs> though, I mean, to be fair, at this point, with how many times I've failed this level, it's not a bad bet. It's just a, a question that... <laughs> oh no, pull all two, you're voting against me too. Oh no! <laughs> Alright. So, we. There we go. Trying to level with this many pawns. We're starting the level. We're starting the level with this many pawns. This is the amount of pawns it took to get here. Without further ado, let's try to beat this level while collecting as few pawns as possible. Ah, okay, so I'm at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, Rector. Sorry for the lack of clarification there. Alright. Lean left. Okay, now we lean right and get the mandatory pawn. Lean left. Now. I think we just keep holding left. No! We have to hold right there. No! Okay. Left. Left. Listen, if we're going to fail anywhere, I'm glad we failed there so that it's, like, right at the start of the level rather than after we've already invested a lot of... a, a lot of time in the level. Okay. And, yeah, so we're, we're starting the level with this many pawns. This is the amount of pawns to, to get here. And without further ado, let's try to beat this level. Oh no, the pressure's on. Okay. So... When in doubt, right is always right. So we're going to the left. I, I want to prove them wrong. I want to beat this level before the end of the night. It's just... Okay. Now we lean right. And we're just going to... We just hold right. Okay, we're good. Yeah, that's true. I like, this is probably the first time with the predictions chat that there's actually like a huge amount of investment on both sides. So I find that that interesting for sure. Hooray for cheering noises. When in doubt, pack out.
speed run time. Oh, I agree, Snowfly. The bridges are a lot more fun when people actually can contribute channel points. And Topper Nicholson has been saving up a lot of uh, channel points, so... It, it, there, there's a lot of pot, there's a lot of sandwiches on the line here. <laughs> okay, so we leaned right last time, which means we have to lean left. Yeah. Keep, keep leaning left, and then right. And now we just need to remember to lean left, left. Okay. First one done. Now we just got two more, more levels. I'm gonna try and take uh, actually almost a pawn. I'm gonna try and take the safest routes I can think of. All right, is this a safe route? I think it is. Let me just. Okay, it is. So we'll, we'll, we'll use that ice hat just as a safety. Right. Go. Okay. I'm not sure what it did there, but then again, the loss of physics don't apply to me. Oh no. I spoke too soon. Apparently, the loss of physics do apply to me. Honestly, if someone wants to flip that, that'd be fine. <laughs> the loss of physics don't fall apply to me. That's just meow <laughs> falling. <laughs> Dump. Dump. Dive. Exactly, stuff like lots of physics hit the small nap and immediately woke up. Okay. Right. Uh, lean right. Okay. And we lean left on the way. Good. Lots of physics need to take a nap. Vicious this can be at times. Exactly, stuff like lean left on the way back. That's right. As we lean right on the way here, so we have to lean left on the way back. Yep. Oh, I I, I didn't know about the times that thing that bots, but I did know about uh, automatically collecting pawns from pitchers and pitcher perfect. But thankfully, we actually proved that you can still be pitcher perfect pawnless. You just have to do literally everything except the, the cameras. So, that's the thing. Okay. You lean left. Leaning left. Leaning left. Okay. We good. Now we just need to make our way back. Ah. 
five. Let's get some bounce here. I, I know, right, Snowflake? It's like, it's really close. Okay. Lean left. We're good. Nice hat for good luck. I'm just going to walk very, very carefully because we only have one left. We just need to do the lava peak. Make sure. Trying to be extremely cautious here because this is where we messed up. Okay, so for that one, we can lean either way, I think. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Keep leaning right. Left. Yeah, left. Right. Okay, we did. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we're approaching the moment of truth. Okay, tried to do a little step there, didn't quite work out, it's all good. Thank goodness the spoders respond. If they didn't, we'd be in trouble. Okay. You know what? I'm actually... These are resources here. Okay. I think we have to lean right there. I think it's right for that one. Because last time we were leaning left and it just kind of shoomed us right in there. I hope I'm right about this. This is not this. We'll have to do this all over again. Right. Lean right. Lean right. Okay, it was right. Thank goodness. Nice goal, all two. Gotta use what we have. Now we just need to get to the plan. So nervous. The. I think the cats are here, and if they are, then they, they can mess things up. I'll take a look at that in a bit, Copper Nicholson, but right now I need to focus on what I'm up to. Okay, we're good. I see pawns. Do many pawns for comfort. Okay, where's the... Okay, we got it up there. I promise I'll get to a Copper Nicholson by... We're right at the end, so... Right, this is it. Oh, dear. Pawns all around me. I don't like this. I don't like this. Okay. Okay. Let's go! One pawn. Let's go! Yes! <laughs> Let's go. It took all stream, but we did it. Yes! <laughs> Which means it is time to resolve the... The, um, the prediction. I am... I am going to end submissions now.
I uh, choose the outcome. Did we do it? Yes, we did. Yep, yes was it. There you go, everybody. Chat points. Cha channel points have been rewarded. <laughs> oh, history, did you bet? <laughs> you were you were on the other side, fair enough. I guess that's the way the cookie crumbles sometimes. That definitely deserves a smud dance. <laughs> You have, little, you have little faith who didn't think. Oh, nice, Snowflake. You got 200 from that. Nice. All right, everybody. So now that that's done, I it, it's time to read, of course, Copper's message. So let's see what we have here. Read a message as a follow. Welcome to my house. As you can see, I knocked over many chairs because I got so tilted at the towers. You see, it's a gamer pad. Not so many girls come here be in here because I get so friend zoned so frequently. It's not as pleasant as you think. They're, they don't, don't treat you like a friend. They treat you like an item. Sometimes I wish I could be, be more than just an accessory. But unfortunately, as a gamer, I don't get respect. That's the difference between you and I, Silver the Hedgehog. I'm an alpha gamer. Anyway, where are we dropping, boys? <laughs> Where you come up with this stuff, Copper Nicholson? <laughs> ah, fair enough, that thoughts. Yep, that, that's right, Snowflake. You did have full faith, and I and I appreciate it. Oh, so you bet so many channel points, Snowflake, and that's why you got such a, a good uh, return from that. Cool. Uh, 80... I think that'll update the pawn counter. Alright. So we are approaching towards the end of the stream. I think at this point, the best thing we can do is try to do a rift really quickly. So there are still some, some time rifts in uh, here, of course. We had... Oh, wait a minute. But first, we have to update the counter. So, Evil Plants, just like a Windmill Peak, has one mandatory pawn. So, let's see here. Yeah, that level was evil. <laughs> with all the zip lines and stuff. So glad we got through it, though. Yep, exactly cool, too. Hat Kid is adorable. Uh, are we near the end of the game, Cool Ball 2? Short answer is no, because I do intend to do all 56 time pieces to see how many pawns are needed for each level, so we still have a ways to go. As there are 56 time pieces in the game, and so far we only have 23. Yep, so let's teleport to the Twilight Belt. The dead, um, that one, that one time rift. <laughs> Death wish when? No. Please. Anything but that. No. <laughs> oh yeah, the time rest right there. That's easy. This is this is perfect timing. Please no, not Palmless Death Wish. That sounds evil. I've never even completed Death Wish normally, so no. <laughs> Time rift is this. Uh, I think this is the Twilight Belt time rift. Anyway, we're starting this time rift with um We're starting this time rift. So we're starting this time rift with 180 pawns. This is the amount of pawns it's said to get here. Without further ado, let's see if we can beat this time rift pawnless. Well, I, that's a good question, Snowflake. The answer may surprise you. Goats. Goats everywhere. Right? 
I think the thing about the goats is they knock us around, so we have to be careful. And there's this mechanic again from the Twilight Bell. But it's a very interesting mechanic. Okay. Let's go! Punless! Let's go! And yeah, I agree, Snowflake. I'm glad we they hacked its, its ha um, hair orange, not just because it's cute, but also because it, it, it fits with the continuity of Emily being hacked. Indeed. Uh, which, yeah, that was the bell time rift, I think. Alright, let's see what we get this time on our rolls. Uh, nah. Ooh, a new remix. Tempting. Tempting. Okay, you know what? Why not? Yeah, it is, it is a good remix. All right, but it is approaching. Where's the other? I remember. Where's the other time rift? Uh... It's it's by the windmill, right? Well, I think this is a good spot to end things here, though, because we did um... ah that that level though. Uh, yes, we will have Drekor. We will go to Nyakas of Metro and Arctic Cruise on this challenge, so that is coming up. It also means we're going to try and do ship shape pondless, which I am not looking forward to. That's that's going to be awful. But um, <laughs> but yeah. Hey, that boss! Thank you so much for the follow. I really do appreciate it. And thank you so much for doing all that uh, scouting on some of the other levels for uh, trying to see if we could do a pondless. I, I really do like it that you're all being so supportive of this challenge run. It's been so much fun. Thanks to this point for sure. And yeah, if you um, if you're watching here on Twitch, I will be doing a raid, so feel free to stick around for that. But if you are watching on YouTube, please consider subscribing on YouTube. It's free to subscribe on YouTube, great right way to show support, and you can always change your mind later. If you're watching on YouTube, I hope you have an awesome night.